Hey everybody, good to see you on the fourth day of 10 days of prayer in Majura at this church. Mm. Today's uh, title is God's Mission and Prayer, Part 2. Can I just warn you that if you go to our website and find this document, it's actually misspelled. I've written God's Missing. <laughs> it's not God's Missing, it's God's Mission and Part 2. And today's uh, title, uh, text for key text is this, Colossians 1 uh, verses 3 to 6. We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the world of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, or as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. We'll ask Pastor Breton to give us his take on today's reading. Mm. So, um, as promised, I am wearing something different today. So I'm not wearing the same shirt at all. Um, and we're talking about today God's mission and prayer. So, the start of the reading today gives a bit of a um, insight into the New Testament church in Acts, in Acts chapter 4. And actually in Acts chapter 4, it says that there were many who heard the word and believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. So there, about, the, the, there seemed to be um, some crazy growth that happened in the early church after um, Jesus. And it's, yeah, a Pentecost, yeah. And it's one that all of us church leaders and all ch Christians really, they, we read this and we marvel and we think, so awesome. Um, so what are some of the things that they did right? What are, what are some of the things that they did that um, helped facilitate this amazing um, growth and spread of the gospel message? Well, um, in today's reading, two reasons are kind of outlined. Um, the first is that the New Testament church saturated everything they did in prayer. A lot of prayer and praying for God's spirit and for God's guidance in where the church will go. Um, and they recognised that they were kind of powerless, that they in themselves were powerless to um, do anything. But it was through the Holy Spirit that they were made powerful. By putting on the full armour of God that they could do amazing things. Much like when I put on this apron, I am an amazing chef. Maladin can confirm. Anyway, so for us, what we can kind of take away is the importance of realising our own powerlessness and the, our need to turn to God in prayer. If we're to do anything as Mildura Adventist Church, we have to pray and we have to kind of hand over our own egos and um, desires to do things our own way. Um, today's there's a bunch of prayers here on the back for you to go through with your families and friends or tonight at the church. Uh, particularly there's a bit of a focus on choosing somebody to pray for. So I want to challenge you today. Is there somebody that you can think of in your life that you would like to pray for today? And you can take some time uh, after the video to quickly just pray for them. Great, thank you so much. So we hope again to see you tonight at 6 p.m. at church. And if you are not, not able to do this, we hope you can gather at some time today and pray and uh, worship uh, and uh, avail yourself to these documents we have on our website and links to the website miljurasda.org are on YouTube comments and the uh, description or on Facebook as well. Thank you again for joining us. Keep praying with us. Beautiful. Thank you and see you later.